okay. Technique, throw a hand up. Take your best shot. In yes, go. Uh, Learning about technology itself, okay. What else? Jump on in, don't be quiet. Just give me your best guesses. What's information? Data. data. That's a really good answer. What's data? Binary coding. Coding. Okay. Bits. bits. Data is bits. Okay. Technically, data is bits or, or bytes. What is a bit and a byte, by the way? And, and then a byte is, yes, there we go, is eight bits. Very good. And now we have the most basic building block of all of information technology, how we store information and how fast we can get to it. And then after that, it's all about what we do with it, right? Okay. So what are some of the cool things you, well, first of all, what's a bit? Conceptually, what's a bit? Yes or no. It's a yes or a no. Very good. How do we express that yes or a no? in the computer. Ones and zeros. What's that known as? Binary. Very good. Okay, so what's binary conceptually? On or off. One thing or another. We call that sometimes in social science okay. the same time. Really seriously screwing up the world being called quantum computing where stuff can exist in multiple states. I think could be I could be BSing you limitations of oh the limitation is but yeah limitations of black box computing is very fascinating okay so now that we have a concept right now of how that information is getting stored what do you what do you use bits and bytes for identifying information storing information okay that is true We start with the concept that we're going to stack up a bunch of bits and bytes together and tell them all what state they're in, and then we make it happen. How do we make it happen? What flips bits? <laughs> Later. What, what, what makes that happen? How do you flip a bit? Sure, hardware, just your best guess. Okay. Best thoughts? What is a magnetic storage medium? Does do any of you know what that is? Have you ever seen a cassette tape before, oh, perhaps? That's that's slightly different. What does a magnetic storage disk or storage medium mean to you all? Have you ever seen a, a, a cassette tape? Yes. Many of you is floppy disk. Record okay. All of those things I'm here, some way of magnetically storing and flipping the bits on those magnetic storage devices in some way or another to tell you what the state of that bit is, whether it's a zero or whether it's a one, yes or no, dummy variable, binary, right? That's why you'll hear people, um, even now, although really it was much more common, talk about tape storage or tape backup for computers because you can take a cassette tape, it would take a lot of cassette tapes, to back up that MacBook right there if you really wanted to, okay? Hang on for a second, I gotta go. Grab somebody in the class. Okay, lost a point. Remember to look at the bottom of that syllabus. If you show up late and I have to come and let you in, you lose a point off your class grade. All right. So with all that information, what's the most common thing that we might want to do with storing information for later? Why do people, why do people store information? to retrieve it later, okay? What's the first recorded instance of someone storing information for later that you can think of? What's that? Cave drawings, right there. That was awesome and killer, I like you. 
All right. I do. I like all of you. I love it when you jump in and you give me awesome answers. Sometimes that people haven't even thought of. You happen to be right where I was at right now. I would have taken things like hieroglyphics. Okay, the Rosetta Stone isn't actually true, but examples like that. And we store this information for later. Why do you think they stored that information about cave paintings for later? Why would a, a Neanderthal want to store that information and what were they talking about? What life was like during that time, or communicate? Yes, on some, to express themselves. That's a wonderful example too. Absolutely, to show that they can do it, that they can paint on, in red clay on a cave wall. That works great too. Uh huh. That is a great answer. First of all, don't ever get yourself down when you sit there and think to yourself, I've got a dumb answer to that question. Sometimes the best answer to any question is the simplest one possible. And that's what we're always trying to do in information technology, all right, is take a complex problem and boil it down to where we can make it simpler and easier, okay? So because they were bored is a killer answer. I love that. If I'm bored, what do you do? I mean, what do you do if you're sitting there and you're bored and you've got nothing to do? Create, doodle. What else do you do? I don't know about you, but when I'm bored and I want to expend some excess mental energy and I feel like dipping my toe into a well of filth, I go tweet for a while. Right? I mean, 10,000 followers. What's that? I said you have like 10,000 followers. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> All right. right. So the reason that we store this information is to go back and get it later. And the story of information technology has been one of increasing our efficiency in the storage of that. And we get to do the coolest things with it, right? What's the coolest thing you can imagine someone in technology doing with stored information? Creating a virtual reality, that's killer. All right, what else? AI. AI, artificial intelligence. Singularity situation happening here. What else? Really cool stuff. Mapping the universe. What's that? Mapping, Mapping the universe. By the time you got to the edge of the universe in a map, wouldn't it already have expanded further to the all the way? What's that? Imagine if you could. I like that. Imagine if you could, though. AI, virtual reality, mapping the universe. What's some of the cool stuff you could do with a map of the universe and artificial intelligence and virtual reality? Create your own world, simulations of your own world. That's so cool. I mean, who wouldn't love this stuff, right? This is the greatest stuff ever. And the most simple and basic building blocks are we write something down so someone else can figure it out later. Because you can't store all that information in one head, right? Or transmit what's in your head to someone else unless you have some kind of tool to do it with. A stylus, red paint on a cave wall, a MacBook Air. This one needs to speed up happier. Okay. What else is information technology to you now that you understand that? Making life easier. Yes. There has been a substantial, although we've, we see a lot of crap on Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff like that, the most substantial achievement of technology is raising the global living standard. People live today better than you, they could possibly have imagined 100 years ago, 150 years ago would be a good way to put it, okay? The Industrial Revolution with the beginning of, what are some of the, the major inventions of the Industrial Revolution? Assembly line, uh, that's a process, not so much an invention, but it uses inventions from the Industrial Revolution and optimizes their use. There's inventions and processes, and sometimes the best things are both, right? Telegraph is a great example. What else? Sewing machine. Okay. What else? You guys know what a spinning jenny is? What's that? It's, um, it has to do with the way that you card and pull uh, wool apart and cotton apart. Okay. What's that? A cotton gin. Another really great example. Okay. So the way that we think of the Industrial Revolution and the progress into information technology should always be a process of making things faster and easier and more automated. The more we can power things that we can transition our own energy and effort into, not from a 1 to 1, but a 1 to 10 or a 1 to 100 or a 1 to 1,000 ratio, the better our lives get. Right? Go ahead. Invented computers and invented chips are dying, and more and more people are forgetting how to actually make a chip. 
themselves physically? I love that question. I love that question. Hang on for a second. I love that question about whether or not people are dying out right now who have the capacity to create these chips and stuff like that, and whether or not the original knowledge was getting lost. Uh, how many of you have read the Foundation Trilogy by Isaac Asimov? You know, talking about science fiction? I know about it. Have you read? So, who has questions about what the, the nature of information technology really is and why we do it this way? I love the definitional difference between, between process and invention. So, give me some other, uh, some other processes. The internet is a combination of processes and inventions, but it's a good example. It's, it's a piece of technology we're going to have to pull apart. Okay. What's that? Market is a com is closer related to a community and believe it or not, and we can talk about it later, a weather phenomenon than an actual invention. Okay? Lots of stuff. So give me another example if you can of a process. Communication. Communication. Very good. The the process by which information gets to one from one location to another. And your example of the telegraph is a very good one. The process by which information gets from one place to another used to be a telegraph, right? You'd sit there, do, 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 Morse code all the way across the country, and it would take days and hours, and then after a while, it got shorter and shorter to minutes when you would find out about something unbelievable or amazing happening on the West Coast in a matter of minutes or hours on the East Coast. This was extraordinary. This is the first time anyone's ever been able to make that big a leap in human communications. I would argue that that great a jump in the capacity of, of humans to communicate one to the other was only topped by the internet, right? That huge a leap in the ability of humans to talk from one end of the earth to another has only been exceeded by the internet in the amount of improvement on the pre previous process. Yes? What about more access to 
technology. On the internet with the story. Is, is it's forward. Basically, it's horses, telegraph, Wi-Fi. And those are the huge leaps we could make. And I'm sure that, that you're all going to have opinions, and, and I love that you do. And one of the things that I get to do is make you all tell me your opinions in written form, which is the fun part of being able to assign homework. And on that note, let's go ahead and move forward into the logistics and administrative if nobody has any further questions. Any more questions on the nature of what InfoTech actually Sounds good. All right. <laughs>